Hello and welcome to the channel. In my last few episodes I was working with DC to DC converter and I kind of almost given up because I thought I would never be able to fix it. Just a quick recap what happened in the previous episodes, I started from opening the bottom of the inverter to gain access to DC to DC converter. Unfortunately that proven to be a bit of a challenge and once I opened the cover to my disappointment I discovered that one of the cables was damaged. So I had to engage in a quick repair of the cable to get it ready for the testing. To my disappointment when I connected the high voltage and connected a 12 volt enable signal I found that DC to DC converter was not working. I thought that perhaps my high voltage power supply was not delivering voltage high enough to trigger DC to DC converter. So I decided to make an improvised battery module that could deliver 100 volts. Having done the same test with the battery module, I though obtained the same results unfortunately. Because for me it's very valuable that Prius inverter has such a multifunction design so I will have two inverters that can drive two motors I will have um, obviously DC to DC converter and there is a potential for charger to use bug boost converter which is here to use it as a charger so obviously the charger it may be sort of more difficult task to tackle but I really wanted to get DC to DC converter working and whatever I tried I just couldn't get it to work and basically I've decided to just strip it down to bare um, necessities so to say and just wanted to work with the DC to DC converter. So what I did I applied high voltage straight into the DC to DC converter. It's not connected at the moment don't worry that the fact that I'm touching it. And basically all I needed in theory to for this to work all I needed to do is apply the 12 volts to the yellow and brown wire to enable DC to DC converter and I tried this and I still could not get it to work. So that kind of led me to conclusion there is some sort of fault within the inverter itself. So I've decided to retrace my steps and go back to what I did and check everything again. And as some of you if you watched the video where I damaged the converter and um, so I did damage some of the wires on this side here. And so what I've decided to do is to double check them and initially what happened is that I've damaged some of the wires but two or three wires in the edge here they were fine they were undamaged. Um, this time I decided to retest everything and of course guess what I found two of those wires that were undamaged at the time I tested them they were fine they uh, apparently after a number of attempts of me to solder these other wires so I was folding board backwards and forward so when I tested them now uh, without taking board off I found that they are actually damaged. So I um, resoldered those wires, put the new wires in place and guess what I tested it and it's working. We have a battery modules that give me about 100 volts and they are connected through this fuse and switch. This is where we come in so we have a connection uh, with two parts here so this is um, plus and this is minus so we come in here and all I've done is I've applied the 12 volts enable voltage from the power supply and got the ground here at the same time I have the battery just as a sort of a dummy load so to, to test that DC to DC converter working we're going to look at the clamp meter here we're going to measure the voltage on the battery itself. So there would be this voltage here so at the moment it's 12.0 volts. Once I turn this on there you go 100 volts and once I apply the voltage 15 volts so we are getting 16 amps and we're charging our lithium-ion battery. So I have to be careful because this would be overcharging because it's 12 volts and actually 15 volts would be really overcharging it. Okay and now if I show you this so we can see the current here. Oops. And now if I turn off the enable signal, see the current is gone down. So DC to DC converter turned off and I do expect enable it back and we have our current is ramping up and our DC to DC converter is working. We're back at 16 amps. Actually I find, um, ooh crikey, I find this battery is getting rather warm. Right, yeah, they, they do really feel really hot, so I better <laughs> stop using them because it does, it could be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
I think I should be able to control the voltage on my DC to DC converter by applying a PWM signal to one of the pins which is labeled VLO. Um, I started my experiment from just setting up an Arduino Uno board here and actually trying to generate PWM signal. I'm running this simple code on, on Arduino so it's effectively just using analog write signal which effectively gives you PWM. Um, I'm using period value of 60 um, and I'm using pin 9 on Arduino board so this one here and that gives me this PWM signal 20% period so if I go to 100 120 I think it will be I um, think it will be sort of close to 50% period. But that that will allow me to vary w PWM signal here. So as you can see here on oscilloscope, so just a slight adjustment. Okay, so now our test setup is ready. Now we need to apply this to the inverter. Having connected Arduino board in slightly ad hoc way, I managed to apply PWM signal to the VLO input. Starting from a duty cycle about 10-15%, I got about 12.7 volts and then having applied about 50-40%, I've got voltage of 15.47 volts. Now with DC to DC converter puzzle solved, I can move on to the next task, but that I will discuss in the next video.